Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Susie, the owner and creator here at Susie on the Farm. Here on YouTube, I love to show you guys how I run my small resale business. In today's video, I'm going to have six thrift flips for you. I hope you enjoy today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. For our first project, do y'all remember all the ceramics that I got at that estate sale? Well, I picked up this giant hen and rooster. The hen and chicks was $3 and the rooster was $5. They're unfinished completely. I believe the lady had a ceramic business. There was tons of unfinished ceramics. I am using a new to me color by Fusion. Um, this is called Oakum, and I knew I wanted a dark base on these for what I had in mind. And this turned out to be the absolute perfect color. It's this deep, rich, gray brown color and i cannot wait to use this on some furniture it is going to look so good so i did two and some touch-up coats on these i used my big pointed stash brush by stallmeister and it made pretty quick work of it and i am now going to whitewash a white paint over these not whitewash dry brush if you're not familiar with dry and brush, it's really easy to do and adds so much to your pieces. So if, as you can see, I'm using just a little chip brush and I put just a dab of white paint on it and I do wipe most of it back so there isn't a lot of paint. And then I just, with a light hand, go over the entire project until I get it as much on there as I want. Now you can do a little or you can do a lot. I did want to pretty heavily color cover these just letting that dark show from underneath and they turned out absolutely beautiful these and they're so giant i am sure someone is going to want these really quick when i get them in the store since i'm using the fusion paint which has a built-in sealer once these are cured dried and cured i don't need to do anything else to them you can find all of the products that I use to do these thrift flips on my website at suzyonthefarm.com if you're interested in transforming some of your own junk. For project number two, I picked up this cute little hanger. Um, it was pretty cute as is. I loved the green on the outside and the distressed old looking handle, but the inside it just needed a little refresh. So I'm going to use some decoupage paper to do that today. But first I'm going to take some of the Victorian lace white paint and do two coats just on the inside. I'm going to leave that beautiful green and even come back and highlight that just a little later. So I'm going to do two coats of Victorian lace and i don't know if y'all know but roy cycled released their new spring decoupage papers last week and i'm so excited to show them to you guys the one we're going to be using in this video is called um the new is the new spring master board and it is filled with birds and flowers and all these beautiful colors so i knew that one would go perfect on this little hanger 
look at all of the different images. It takes forever to use one of these sheets of papers on your smalls, and I just love all these beautiful images. That bird up in the corner with the nest was kind of the one I had in mind, but I did take my little hanger and just, you know, measure it over several of the images to make sure what I did want to use. I did finally settle with my original and I'm gonna use that bird and that nest there. So to cut out the right size, I just laid it onto my project and I used my fingernails to crease the paper and just cut right along that crease line so it fits perfectly in my project. For decoupaging, I love to use the Fusion um, decoupage gel. Um, it's kind of thick, but super, super soft. So I just lay down this starter strip and I do recommend wetting, misting your decoupage paper. It really makes such a difference with wrinkles. It is virtually impossible to have wrinkles if you wet your paper. I think it releases those fibers where they stretch just a little bit and uh, doesn't have any wrinkles. So after I do my starter strip, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the rest of it and pull it all down. And you can see how it did stretch the paper because now I have all that excess left there on the bottom. That's no problem. Once it completely dries, I can just take my um, X-Acto knife and get that off. Now to keep any of the white paint from popping around the edges in case there was some, I took some of the Fusion Aging Wax and just went around, actually I went over the whole piece, but I went heavier on the edges. And then I just took a microfiber towel and wiped that back. And this is all once the decoupage paper is completely dry. As you can see, I did tear the paper at some point or another just a little bit, but that's no trouble to hide. I wanted to put something else on this anyway. This is the Conservatory Labels Mold. This was part of the IOD Spring Release that happened a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't got this mold, it is so versatile. You can do so much with it and just add so much to your projects. So I'm using some air dry clay and I put some cornstarch in first to help the mold release really well. And then I just rub my finger along the edges to clean it all up really good. Being sure to wrap up my air dry clay once I'm through, you don't wanna leave that out in the air cause it will dry. And then I just use gravity to pull out the little mold and it's a cute little fit on here, but we're gonna do another step to bring it up another notch. This is Apothecary uh, Labels Stamps. And finally, we got some small lettering. Um, some of the letters and there's like, I think there's three or four different fonts and it's all small letters in this and they fit perfectly inside these molds. So I'm just going to take one of the fonts, spell out the word spring. And what I'm gonna do is make an impression in the clay while it's still wet. So I line all that up how I want it in the center of that label there. Then I'm gonna take a thin mount and a brayer and just lightly roll over it to evenly press all those letters down into the clay and it makes this beautiful impression. To highlight that, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the mold. I am using um, a clay base paint. This is DIY in the color Aviary. I had this in my stash from before I started using the fusion paint and I do need to use it up and it was a close match or I think it will be a close match once I put the next step on top of this for the outside of my little hanger. I'm not worried about getting down into the letters because I'm gonna use some of the antiquing glaze over this. Now, I am used to using an all-in-one paint, so I kind of forgot how much this glaze would reactivate that clay-based paint underneath, and it distressed when I wiped it back. Now, I wasn't planning on this. I wanted it all just to stay down in there, but once I wiped it back, I really kind of liked the worn and aged look that the distressing brought to it, so I just went with it. And I think this little label in the end turned out super cute. To glue it onto my project, I'm going to use Tight Bond Glue. That's my favorite 
very easy to use. I just put a little on the back. Take a little brush and spread it all out smooth all the way to the edges. You want it to come to the edges, but you don't want it to squeeze out, so you want it to be pretty thin. And then I just place it on my project and let it dry. And finally, because that clay base paint does need to be sealed, I sealed it with some clear wax and I went ahead and did the entire project. And I think this little hanger turned out pretty cute. What do you guys think about this thrift flip? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video. And if you like this kind of content and you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Okay, moving right along to project number three. So I had this sign in my booth for quite a while, probably four or five months, and it just did not sell. There's another one as well. Um, Y'all may have seen them in a previous video, but for some reason, um, signs with wording on them just don't sell for me anymore. So I decided to bring those home, and in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and upcycle one of them. Um, these are perfect backdrop you know, backgrounds. Anytime you can find a cheap framed canvas like this at a thrift store, go ahead and pick it up because you, then you have something that you can make beautiful home decor, even if that one particular one is not your style. So I'm doing two coats on the inside of this and I'm using Little Lamb. This is a fusion all in one paint. It has a built-in sealer and I love to use this for um, all my projects. This is a pretty soft gray color, so I'm gonna go ahead and do two coats. And another decoupage paper in the spring release is this Spring Elements. I'll show you a little bit more of that in future videos, but today I did want to use this um, new Oxford Sheep in my photo. Now it's much smaller, so I'm actually just gonna use bits and pieces of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the whole thing out and be sure to fold up my decoupage paper so I can use that all on future projects. Now, I should have really just decoupaged it just like this and used that gray as a mat. Oh, don't forget before you do anything to your project, you'll see I just checked on the back there for my hanger because I can't tell you how many times I have done a project and then realized I did it upside down and I have to either remove the hanger or put a new one. So I decided uh, not to use the whole paper because I wanted to use that um, stamp with the frame on it. So I just used my pencil to cut around it and then I kept cutting because I decided that I wanted it even smaller. So I cut right up against that little laurel wreath that is behind the sheep. And I'm gonna decoupage using the Fusion Transfer Gel and doing the same thing. I start a little strip and then I lay that down and it gets it right where I want it. And then I just continue on and I've already misted my decoupage paper. So this was super quick and super easy. And then I also did take the wording off too and just decoupaged it separately. I had to cut it off so because I do plan on putting that frame around this picture and I didn't want it to cover my words. So I do the same thing, lay a little bit of the decoupage transfer gel down, wet my paper, and then go back over the top of it with a little bit more. Once my decoupage paper is dry, then we are gonna come back. This stamp is actually from the new IOD release, the Veranda stamp. This is the only piece that I have used of that stamp so far, but it is absolutely gorgeous. If you haven't checked it out, I'm sure I'll be using it in some future videos. So I just inked up my stamp set and stamped it right over the sheep. Now, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if I like the gray or if I um, would have liked to have seen that uh, background image behind the sheep under the stamp, but I couldn't get it lined up just perfectly. And I think this turned out pretty cute. So sometimes I tend to go overboard and then I end up messing everything up. So instead I decided to just stop right there, except for I need a little something on the bottom. So I took this element from the mercantile stamp and just stamped it right on the bottom. And this is 
quite an improvement from what it was before. It's much more my style now, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this project. The last three projects I'm going to group all together because we're going to be using a lot more of that spring masterboard. I took three smalls from my stash. I've had all of these for quite a while and doing small things is so much fun and they make such a big impact on your home decor vignettes. So I decided to do all these together and make a cute little spring vignette. This is just one of those mini baking pans. This one was pretty old and I have never decided what I wanted to use it for. And like I said, I've had it quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it two coats of Victorian lace on the outside. I do like to leave these unpainted also and do something with them. But for the decoupage paper, I most of the time like to do a really light background so your pop paper really pops so i did two coats on this and this is a little like a little mini cutting board that i had picked up i think that tag said 50 cents there and i've had it quite a while so i'm going to go ahead and get it made over i'm going to do two coats of the victorian lace front back sides everything on this piece and then i also for the last little small i had a little tiny well not tiny but i don't know maybe three by not even three by five a little bit smaller frame and it's a dark wood color so i'm going to clean it up and go ahead and paint it with a couple coats i'm going to take the back and the glass out and clean them up really well too and then once i got my two coats of paint on here i am going to distress it so the inside of this was a little plain so I took some fusion rose water which is this beautiful soft pink and I just painted the inside of the pan and we are going to come back to this spring master board and there like I said there's so many gorgeous images I just picked out a little one for the frame and I used my pencil to mark it and cut it out I'm not going to decoupage this in there or anything, so it can be removed if you wanted to put an actual picture in it. All I'm going to do is put it down and put the frame back together, and it's done. A cute little mini frame to put in your spring vignettes. For the outside, well... I wanted to distress this and bring some of that metal back, but the fusion paint had cured quite a while, and I literally could not get it to distress. It was on there. So I did go ahead and finish just sanding the whole thing just to smooth it out and make it feel the same all the way around. And this little bird fit perfectly on there. I cut it out, and then I used the paintbrush and water method to tear around the image just to so it's not just a cut line just more like a organic tear of it i just think that that makes your project look a little bit more finished and doesn't not necessarily a perfect cut so that's this is real easy to do um, you just wet a paintbrush and rub it along your paper and the paper's so thin that it tears really easily and just really leaves a nice edge on it and then um, this is so small that I don't even need to do a starter strip. I'm just going to put down a layer of the decoupage gel, wet the back of my paper, and stick it on there and go over the top one more time with another layer of the decoupage gel.
For the little cutting board, the images were kind of hard to choose from. I really like this one and it was a perfect fit, but I kind of wanted to stick with the whole bird um, theme that I have going on there. So I settled on this one, which also was a perfect fit. So I just cut it out and I'm going to leave some extra on the edges and decoupage it onto that board. And then once the transfer gel and the paper is completely dry, never ever try to sand your edges off when it's wet because it will tear. I have made that mistake so many times. So um, I just decoupage this on, let it completely dry, and I did it off camera, but I did take a little sandpaper and just sand all the edges down. And these projects are done, they're that easy, and this decoupage paper really transformed these into beautiful home decor for your spring vignettes. made it this far in the video I also have a little surprise for you sometimes I do separate videos with my sales to show you guys what I paid for items how much I sold them for and how much money I made um, I didn't have really enough to do an entire video so I just put this little clip together for y'all to show you most of the items that I sold in my booth and online for the month of February um, this is not everything, but this is what I had pictures for. I am trying to get better about making sure I take pictures of everything that I put in the booth so I can show you guys. But as you can see, I sold quite a mixture of vintage items and upcycled items and made a pretty good bid in February. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if this is the kind of content you like. I post videos every Wednesday night at 6, and I'll see you guys again next week. Thanks so much for watching.